All right, class, for those of you out there who are interested in learning how to paint up an Incubi blade, this is how I do it. The first thing, and uh, I've already started because my video uh, kind of skipped and messed up on me, is I've added the scale color Necro Gold. I think this is a huge game changer for anybody who's painting evil models or undead or demons. It's such a great color and I'm just going to show one more time how smoothly it goes on as we do a second coat. You don't even need a second coat. I think I've showed my Prince Duval model before and um, he looks great. So this little piece on the sword is a pop of that gold color just to draw the eye. The rest of it should still be black in its original black primer. So now while that's drying we're going to move on to some purple. And this is going to be Nagaroth Knight, which we're going to be using on any of the hand uh, grips. So there are two, there are actually three on an Incubi sword. And depending on what your figure is doing, you might be using all of them or just this one here at the bottom. So just drag the paint along. And uh, let me see if I could find one where they're not holding that grip here. So you're painting down there and then the grip up there and or the grip up here. One or two, two of those three are going to be painted or, cover, or covered, right, because of their hands. But uh, one of those is going to be open. So that's the one you paint. And we're going to be painting on this little strip of cloth here. I'm using purple as an accent color. If you're using a different color scheme, I would go with whatever accent color you're using. For example, if you're painting your Drukari with all red armor and the white accent, the white would be what you would want to paint that strip of cloth because it is the accent color. It's not the main color. That's why I'm not painting it this ghostly green. I'm painting it purple because the purple is what I'm using to accent on the cloth. Now that that's done, we're going to take Administratum Gray. And you're really just going to be edge highlighting, so you don't want too much of this, and you want to really uh, make sure that most of it is wiped off of the tip of your brush. Just going to use it to drag very lightly along the back end of the blade. Also here down at the bottom, just a little bit to suggest light reflecting off of the outline. Now we're going to move on to our lead belcher for the actual blade itself. Where's my lead belcher? Igor is master. Have you seen my lead belcher paint? Oh yes master, I've been using it to paint up my Stormcast Eternal's army. Your what? Stormcast Eternal. Oh no, I remember what happened to it. Got kicked on the floor when the crown prince, my son, was up here playing with my paints. Okay, Lead Belcher. Make sure I get that back, Master. I'm painting up some Stormcast Eternals. I'm actually looking at all of the, not vampire counts, what are they called? New vampire counts. Soulblight Gravelords. I've got a bunch of those models that I've yet to uh, open and paint up, so man, I'm really looking forward to that. Now, if you are a perfectionist, or you just want to make sure that you've got all your angles covered, you can flip your model over, and it really helps to have a handle. This is the one that I'm using right now. It's a Games Workshop handle. It's small. It fits nicely in your hand, but you could just as easily use something like a pill container here, or you can also use something like an empty paint pot. Just flip that thing over and put some blue tack on the back there and stick your model on it. If you just need something that your hand will grip easily. Next thing we're gonna do is paint the ghostly green glow. And this is the same thing that I use for the mask as well as the uh, pipes. It's moot green. Now, uh, just like with the 
ghostly glow for the mask, you really want to water it down. So put that on your palette paper or your wet palette. Water it down as much as possible and test it out here on the bottom. Because you've watered it down or you've used Lamian medium, however you thin down your paint, you are able to uh, see how it spreads within the runes. And so use all of these runes on the back as like a testing ground because no one's going to see it. Well, no, it's there, but nobody's going to see it. Then when you're ready, this is when you want to be just a little bit careful because you could just be sloppy and messy and just have it spill all over. But what's going to happen is that glow is going to get on the edges where it's going to obscure the uh, outline of the runes. So if you can, get it just into the engraving. You see how it muddies it up when it's on the outside like that? Because you've got some water, it's mostly being transported by water. The paint is flowing into all the creeks. Or the, cr the creeks flowing into the cracks and the crevasses. You don't have to do too much work. All right, beautiful thing about this uh, paint job too is you don't need any thinning, uh, any washes. You're gonna jump straight to the Runefang steel. Yeah, my son was in here earlier and I was, <laughs> I had my Sentinel out, my Imperial Guard Astro Militarum Sentinel and um, he, we started playing with it, so I said, I guess I'm gonna have to film something else. Now what we're gonna do is, you're gonna look at your model, and the goal is we wanna create diagonal slashes with the paint to uh, catch the light and make bright reflective surfaces. So I'm going to see which is the best angle because of the way it looks like he's chopping, he's slicing his blade at a kind of crescent like this. I'm not gonna put the slashes that way if that makes sense. I'm going to put the slashes that follow the line of how he's slashing. And just like a little kid, I have a little bit too much fun doing that. All right, so following the natural motion, I'm just going to be making random slashes. Sometimes you want to group them together and sometimes you might want to uh, have some space. Some of them you want to be doing a little bit fatter and some of them you want to get as sharp as you can. All right. Now, if you'd like, you could take some of that Runefang steel and just lightly kiss the top of your Necro Gold, but you really don't have to. Necro Gold is such a beautiful color. It's going to pick up the light no matter what, no matter which angle you turn it at, so you don't have to create that false illusion of the light reflecting off the gold to make it silver. And there you have it. Your Drukari Incubi has his toy and is ready to go out and conquer the enemy with his martial prowess. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more, and uh, we'll see you around. If you're not on the Discord yet, head on over there for more content, and uh, happy painting.